Okay guys, hello. This video, I'll introduce you to the important aspects in chapter 12. In order to understand chapter 12, you still need to remember all the essentials that we learned in first chapter 9, in terms of bookkeeping, but also of course in chapter 11 where we went through the regulations and the rules that applied for companies especially photos in Denmark wanted to uh, establish a business, what the requirements from the authorities were, and also what requirements in terms of how would you estimate the value of, for example, an asset, but also how do you estimate the value of cash. In this chapter, we're going to talk about how you are able to actually focus on analyzing different uh, situations for a company in terms of we are going to introduce the term ratios which uh, you briefly have been introduced to before but now we're going to go through it uh, as much as possible anyway we will start off with the DuPont pyramid the DuPont pyramid which we'll see here uh, shows the net profit ratio, the asset turnover ratio, and the return on investment. This is the most central uh, model in uh, business economics and analyzing ratios. Here we are actually introduced to first the earning capacity and the capital adjustment capacity. And if we see here net turnover, which we also call revenue, if you minus the variable cost, you get the contribution margin. The contribution margin, if you dare, if you from the contribution margin uh, subtract the fixed costs you'll get the profit before interest profit before interest is essential because here we'll see when we're paid for all the costs in relation to production or if we are a retail store if we have paid all the costs in relation to getting our goods then afterwards you subtract the fixed cost fixed cost uh, salaries uh, buildings uh, etc you get the profit before interest if you divide that with the net turnover and multiply with 100 you'll get the net profit ratio net profit ratio indicates if and how much in percentage we have left when we have paid our cost of the turnover so if for example the net profit ratio is six percent it means that every time the company makes 100 corner, it will receive a six corner left when they have paid first their variable cost and then their fixed cost. Yes. And if we go to the opposite side, we see the current assets and the fixed assets. Current assets, stock in hands, account receivable and liquid assets. These are put together with current as current assets. This means this is these are assets that the company are able to turn into cash. Add this with the fixed assets. Fixed assets that can be a car, a machine, others also. This is in total. If you put fixed assets and current assets together, you get the assets, the total assets. Net turnover divided with assets will give us the asset turnover ratio. The asset turnover ratio is essential in understanding how well the company is at making money up upon their investments. So if the asset turnover ratio, which is, uh, which is uh, accounted for in times per year, is one, two times, it means that the company at is able to make to reach the net turnover value in assets one time two times etc for larger companies asset turnover ratio typically isn't um, isn't uh, isn't very high but for companies like company like uh, uh, a clothes store uh, supermarket etc you'll see a high asset turnover ratio. But for a company like bio, uh, a biotechnological company, you'll see a lower asset turnover ratio because much of their investment is in assets and much of it is not reached 
many times per year. Then the transaction is net profit ratio multiplied by the asset turnover ratio gives us the return on investment. The return on investment tells us how well the company is at Return on investment is a performance measure used to evaluate the efficiency of an investment. It means that how well is this investment to uh, uh, to um, create a return. In this case, it's very good in order to actually compare different companies. So if you have five different companies and you look at the return on the investment, you'll probably get an indication on what the one that has the best return on investment where where you should uh, where you should invest your money